here we back we back and now unfortunately brothers we got a different type of video but like i said we can always extract lessons from different type of stories now on today's video we're gonna be talking about dame dash says that he is proud broke and claims that he is struggling to pay child support now we got to get into it it's crazy because i was just watching a clip this morning of jay-z talking about how he would never sell his masters and i seen this article right after saying dame dash going broke this is crazy bro this is crazy but we got to get into it bro not wasting no time let's jump straight into the article rockefeller founder and jay-z's partner says he is proud broke and is struggling to pay child support bills for his youngest daughter with the model and fashion designer rachel roy the harlem native made the explosive revelation on the ceo show on the new network he claimed that the court and Roy's attorneys are erroneously considering his net worth from decades ago to extract money he no longer earns because his current business ventures are not making money. He cannot meet the child support arrangements he has for years struggled to pay. While I'm investing in something else, I might not be making the money and the profit, so I cannot afford to pay out when I was when I was having $8 million a year. So you cannot judge how much I'm going to pay out by how much I made 20 years ago, he said. Once a prominent figure in the hip hop industry alongside Jay-Z, he co-founded Rockefeller Records, orchestrating the lucrative Hard Knock Life Tour in 1999, amassing $19 million. With Rockefeller's fame and constant placement at the top of the charts, he reportedly reached a pinnacle net worth of $50 million. He also raked in millions from Rockaware, their clothing line, and the brand's film company. With the dissolution of his personal and professional relationship with Jay-Z, his companies and many other ventures failed. As a result, his finances seemed to tank. Now, in 2023, his estimated net worth is $100,000. He is working to reach the same heights he once soared in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Man, listen, bro. Man, listen. I had to do it by rubbing two sticks together, Dash lamented, before adding that this is the reason why he cannot pay the six figures, ranging between $300,000 and $400,000 that the court has mandated over the years. Jesus Christ. He continued saying that he is not ashamed of where he is right now because he has things to show for it, but it has not profited yet. In 2019, he was arrested for unpaid child support. He had to pay back support, not just to Roy, but to his first child's mother, Cindy Morales. According to People Magazine, he was facing over 400,000 in child support owed to two women, responsible for daughters Ava and Tallulah, and his son. In April 2015, a Bronx family court judge issued an arrest warrant for Dash and mandated a $62,000 payment to Morales. It took four years for a Supreme Court divorce warrant to be issued, demanding Dash pay $342,000 to Roy. Dash addressed the warrants at a Manhattan courthouse after settling $1 million to resolve one warrant. He was promptly arrested upon leaving the courtroom. Subsequently, Dash was handcuffed and escorted by police to a Bronx courthouse to settle his remaining debts. Overall, he paid over $1 million to clear his name and get released from jail. Now, let's get into it, bro. Let's get into it. I'm just going to come out and say it off the rip and Dame Dash might not want to hear it, but if you've been keeping track lately, right, you'll notice a lot of music artists from various different genres, but especially in hip hop, they have been selling their catalogs to these uh, different, you know, these mysterious companies. I don't understand, but they've been selling their catalogs off for, you know, $100 million, $20 million, $50 million, $70 million. And I think that Dame Dash in this situation, he would benefit from selling his catalog, selling the masters, selling the publishing, whatever you got from the Rockefeller days back in the day. I think he would directly benefit in his situation, it would be an ideal situation to grab that lump sum of cash. In the last few years alone, I heard about Nelly sold his catalog, I think 50% of his catalog for $50 million. Wiz Khalifa sold his, his two or three big singles, Black and Yellow, See You Again, and I forget a third one, for a decent chunk of change. Dr. Dre sold his catalog for $200 million. Metro Boomin, one of Future's producers, sold a part of his catalog for $70 million. So I know for a fact, if Metro Boomin can get $70 million just for a fraction of his catalog, I know Dame Dash can get a nice chunk of change, a nice bag of money. Go ahead and sell the catalog, big bro. Go ahead and sell it. But anyways, let's dive deep on the subject, though. Because I think it's a lot of things black men can learn from this situation as another case study to not fall in the same pitfalls. First things first, I'm going to just come out and say I never met Dame Dash. I never been around him. But just from listening to him in his interviews, just from, you know, having a basic knowledge of him, and I know guys with a similar mentality, a large part of the reason why Dame Dash is down on his luck right now is because he's one of those guys, he refuses to get a job. When I say get a job, I mean he refuses to ever answer to nobody, right? He's one of those guys where, listen, I'm going to work for myself or I'm just going to be broke, right? I'm either going to do my own thing, be the CEO of my own operation, or I'm just going to be broke. Because Dame Dash, he could easily get a deal with some big company, get a podcast, get some type of partnership going. He could easily get some type of corporate position at some label, at some big label, and just, you know, collect a check like that. But because of his personality, he refuses to ever answer to nobody. And that's a large part of the reason why the money looking funny. 
And I'm sure sometime 10 years ago, everybody seen the classic interview on The Breakfast Club with Dame Dash, right? And that was a classic. I don't care what nobody said, that was a classic. That was a classic. But for me, when it came to Dame Dash, it's always been the right message, wrong messenger. Everything Dame Dash says in regards to, we need more black men with a more business mind. We need more black men who are thinking in a more business oriented fashion. We need more black men providing jobs to the community. We need more black men in a position to give out opportunities. I'm with that 100%. But where it becomes a contradiction is where Dame Dash's life himself, it doesn't reflect the rhetoric. His own lifestyle doesn't match the rhetoric. That's where it starts looking funny. But besides that, I'm with that 100%. On the service, I'm with it 100%. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some other black men in the industry who have made the right business moves, who have actually set themselves up for generations and, and their kids gonna be you know living comfortably, right? So I'm still gonna promote Dame Dash's message in regards to business creation, business ownership, especially among black men, but I'm gonna use different examples. Now, let's get into it. First things first, what Dame Dash messed up at was, instead of looking into the future, he kept trying to recreate the magic from 1996, from 1998, from 2001. He kept trying to create that magic from back in the day, instead of looking into the future and broadening his horizons and opening up his options, as they say. You know, he didn't wanna, he kept trying to go backwards, man. He didn't wanna go forward, meaning that, in the early 2000s, right, if you were a rich black man sitting on a whole bunch of money, you sold a whole bunch of records, you should have been looking to invest in tech. Tech should have been the only thing you was messing with. And I'm not even just talking about in the music industry. I'm talking about just in general. But even if you look at the music industry, the streaming companies, how the, how the industry has transformed, you should have been looking into getting into technology, bro. That should have been the only thing. If you sit on a whole big bag of money back in the day, 20 years ago, you should have been jumping in tech. Because if you look at guys like Chameleonaire, take a look up on the screen. You remember Chameleonaire from back in the day? They see me rolling. They hating. Listen. Chameleonaire, he dropped one record. My man had one record and he rich forever. He rich forever, I guarantee, and it's, it's not off music. It's not off music. It's because he invested in tech. He took the money he made from one record and he flipped that, bro, oh my God. We gotta, so let's get into Chameleonaire, bro. Let's get into Chameleonaire. We gonna talk about a black man that made the right moves. I think sometime like 15 years ago, he invested in something called Maker Studios. It was some type of subsidiary under YouTube or something like that. And then it was acquired by Disney for $500 million in 2014. I think he only invested a million dollars into that joint, bro. He invested a million dollars. He came out with 20 million. Bro, I'm telling you, bro. I think he invested in something else called Cruise. It was some type of uh, some self-driving car app. I don't know what it was. Some self-driving car technology company, right? And I forget what he invested into that one. But I do know it was acquired by General Motors for $1 billion. With a B. $1 billion. And he was an early investor on that as well. So he got a nice chuck and change for an undisclosed amount. And he was also an early investor on Lyft. I'm sure you I'm sure you heard about Lyft. Yeah, yeah, that shit like Uber, but yeah. He, he was an early investor in Lyft. And as we know, Lyft is currently worth billions of dollars in the modern day. And besides Chameleon there, we got different examples. We got 50 Cent, who diversified his revenue streams, jumping into film and television with power and everything like that. And that goes back to what I said earlier. Dame Dash would never be in a position to jump into a venture like power because he doesn't want to work a job. 50 Cent is making a whole gang of money. I'm sure he's made millions on top of millions, but that is kind of a job because he's working in partnership with Stars, the Stars Network, or whatever network the TV show is on. He has to answer to the corporate heads over at the network as they do business together. So Dame Dash, like I said, he leaves a lot of money on the table because he doesn't ever want to just grab a corporate job and just collect a check and just mind his business. He wants to, you know, be at the top of the pyramid. But at the end of the day, man, Sometimes, man, just get a job, bro. Sometimes it's all good, man. Working a job, it's all good, man. Now, besides Chameleon Air 50 Cent, we can look at somebody like Nas, who also diversified his revenue streams by jumping into the venture capital game. I think it was like 10, 15 years ago or something like that. I believe Nas was an early investor in Coinbase. Yes, if you were on the crypto wave early, you definitely, you definitely was using Coinbase back in the day. I don't mess with crypto no more, but back in the day, yeah, I was on Coinbase. So he was an early investor in Coinbase and it was speculated that he, was, he could have profited over $100 million when Coinbase went public. I believe that Nas was also an investor in something called Pluto TV, which was sold to Viacom for $340 million. And I believe in 2018 alone, Nas generated damn near, what he earned? Like $35 million. And his tech portfolio got over 40 different startups that he invested in, from tech to healthcare, crypto. He got Lyft and Dropbox in the portfolio. Man, Nas, man, listen, Nas out here doing a goddamn thing on the very low key. But what I'm trying to say is this, man. What I'm trying to say is this. I think that Dame Dash, when he was on top, he never thought that the roller coaster would ever come to an end. 
And I believe when it comes to business especially, it's normal to fall off. Like, you're going to have situations where your money gets fucked up and you fall off and you got to come back up. But I think with Dame Dash, I think he fell off and he never came back. I'll be honest with you, man. I think Dame Dash situation, because if you're engaged in business, there's going to be situations, there's going to be times where your money's looking funny and you fucked up and you fall off. You got to get back up. You got to get your money back right. But I think Dame Dash fell off and he never came back, bro. That's what makes this story even more tragic. And I think that he was he kept trying to recreate that same magic from back in the day. But you should have been looking towards the future. When you look at the men that I named in this video, you saw they were looking towards the future. They were looking towards technology. They were looking towards different industries, different sectors. I think he kept trying to beat that same sector, trying to recreate that same magic from Rockefeller back in 1997. And I think that even Jay-Z was looking towards the future. Jay-Z went into technology. Even Jay-Z went into tech. But like I said, the lessons that black men can learn from this, brother, never get comfortable. When you're on top, when you're making the most money you ever made in your life, don't ever get comfortable and assume that you're going to always be making this type of money, you know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Nah, never get comfortable, bro. Never, trust me, never get comfortable. Diversify the money you do got. Take the money you are making and put that shit to the side, bro. Put that shit to the side and throw it in different sectors, different industries, man. I'm telling you, throw that shit to the side. Don't be blowing your money when you're getting your money. And look into the future. Like I said, man, look into the future and live within your means. I think Dame Dash might not be living within his means. His pride might not allow him to just downsize his living situation, downsize the vehicle that he's driving. His pride might not allow him because he might feel like I'm Dame Dash. I'm the, I'm the founder of Rockefeller Records. I sold a million records, whatever, whatever. But in reality, I think the reality of the matter is sometimes, bro, it's okay to downsize. It's okay to just get a job, bro. It's okay to just get a job and collect a check. You don't got to get so in love with the CEO position that you never, ever would take a job to just collect a check and get your shit back right again, bro. I would tell Dame Dash, sell the catalog, grab that lump sum of cash, pay off your debts, get a job, a nice job. You know, like I said, 50 Cent when he was working at Stars with Power, that was a job, but that was a very nice paying job. Get a nice paying job with some company, some corporate position, and just collect a check, bro. Collect a check. You at the age where you're supposed to relax. You're not supposed to be still grinding, you know, getting up at four in the morning. Hell no. Nah. Man, you bugging out, bro. You bugging out. And like I said, black men see this as a case study on why it's important to make the right moves. When you're getting the most money you ever made in your life, it's important to not fuck up that bag, bro. It's so many case studies that we could examine of black men who was on top, generating the most money they ever seen, and they fucked off the bag. They fumbled the bag. They ended up with nothing. They ended up broke. They ended up back home. They ended up back in the hood. Listen, we're not trying to end up back at square one. Anyway, man, it's your boy Nevercar. That's Celine back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash out up on the screen, and I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass, and I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart it be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. Now they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the model. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I can't for the power, they can't for the bitch. They make a no hour with it, wage. I got business. This is an art. And they can never be taught Selling my soul I can never be bought Play with my money I see you ain't caught Run to the check And I do it for sport Babylon falling I go to the source Packing my luggage And go overseas Shorty be with me And she so at least Shorty be charged That I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence Probably gonna murder me Don't fuck with brands Cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit And you're smacking their faces